three bedroom apartment, five other roommates. So six of us living in a three bedroom apartment. I was in last. So I was the guy who didn't have his own room, didn't have his own closet. On the couch just, on the floor. The floor, couch, right? Or some, you know, buddies were out. I'm taking their bed. So that's where I got started in Dallas. And I got a job working as a bartender at night and then finally got a job um, in the computer industry. And that's really where I realized, okay, I really like these computers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have an aptitude for it. And this, this is it. I'm going for it. And would get together with one of my Indiana buddies, Todd Wagner. And one day he's sitting down, it's, you know, late 1994, early 95. And he's like, look, this new internet thing, there's got to be a way that we can use it to listen to Indiana basketball. Because we're in Dallas and, you know, this is before you could get it with direct TV or cable right. or whatever, right? And I'm like, okay, let me see if I can figure it out. Because my first company, I would write software, taught myself to write software, did networking wider. So it was a perfect fit to figure it out. So I bought a Packard Bell computer, put it in the second bedroom of my house, connected a radio to it, and we just started working with different software. Didn't write all the software, but wrote enough to get it up and running. Next thing you know, we started this website called AudioNet, worked with the local radio station, KLIF. I set up um, an, a VCR, an old school VCR, next to their radio station. I would record it, take the VCR tapes, encode it, put it on a server in the second bedroom of my house, and then just email and go online and tell as many people, look, if you want to listen to Dallas sports and stuff, come to the site called audionet.com. Blew up immediately. Three years later, it turned into broadcast.com. We added video. We went public. It was the biggest first day IPO in the history of the stock market at the time. And we were YouTube. I mean, literally hundreds of internet radio stations, hundreds of radio stations, TV stations, you know, streaming. Like we went and got the rights to um, North Carolina basketball. Oh. And we were showing online Michael Jordan mixtapes and Once stuff like that. Once you get that, it's a wrap. Yeah, right. And Once so we, were just, we just blew up. And then Yahoo came along and bought us and paid us on... Um, I think it was $5.7 billion in stock, not in cash. So right. then I had to protect my the stock that I got because, you know, fortunately I did. I did this thing called hedging, and it protected me when the whole Internet bubble burst, and mm -hmm. that allowed me to turn it into cash. And then a couple of weeks later, I was trying to buy the map. So when it comes to crypto and blockchain and stuff, how do you feel about that? I, I think it's a, I think a big part of the future. Right. I really, really do. But I think people are looking at it the wrong way. Hmm. People get really amped up about... Um, the price of the, the currency, cryptocurrencies, right? right? The tokens. And they think that's really what crypto is, but it's not. That's the noise, right? The signal is, if I were going to start a business, how can I use this new technology to give myself a competitive advantage and disrupt an industry? And so, you know, to give you an example is NFTs. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's all amped about NFTs, and right. you see guys with their board ape yacht club all and, day long, all day, all long, day right? long. And it's a collectible, just like anything else. But to me, NFTs are just a proof of concept and an example of how smart contracts work.